everyone for some more Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney here on Nintendo Switch. And we are continuing day one of the trial in the case against Machi Dubai. And in the last episode, we heard testimony from both Detective Emma Sky and La Marur, the Siren and the Ballad. And it's been established that the only wit person that could have possibly gone in and uh, committed the murder would have been someone the size of a child, which unfortunately for us implicates Machi Dubai as the prime suspect. But hopefully we can get some testimony here from Emma, which she is slated to go back on the witness stand, and hopefully we can get something here to try to at least clear the air a little bit around her client. But before we do that, hope you guys have an awesome day today. Hope you guys are doing well. So without further ado, we are going to go ahead and hear testimony from Emma. Ready, uh, forehead? Uh, I hope I didn't just miss my only chance. Frau Line Detective, how far have we gotten until you we were so rudely interrupted? Don't ask me. I just like saying the same thing twice. And I never repeat a song for an encore. If you would, Miss Guy. <laughs> I believe I was saying that the only way Mr. Latouche's killer could have escaped was through that air vent on the ceiling. Oh, yes, there was only one door in the room. And a witness, you, was standing in front of it. That air vent isn't very big, see? Kind of limits the people you could possibly get through. I certainly would have a difficult time. You sure would, not that you would have been there in the first place, though. Remember, the whole backstage area was often limits to people not involved with the concert. The only one who meets the conditions for a killer is a defendant. A virtuoso performance. I couldn't have put it better myself. Hmm, she does state a clear case. Though, reading the report, something caught my eye. Oh, what's that? The circumstances of the defendant's arrest. The circumstances? Again? Hey, that's right, Apollo. Remember when we found Machi? That was bizarre. She's right. Why did Mr. Otus's body disappear from the room and end up on the top of that stage tower, holding a guitar, no less? Perceptive observation there, Judge. Uh, uh, thanks. It was kind of an accident, really. But you work in this job long enough. You get a nose for things. <laughs> the judge sure seems pleased with himself. Very good, Frontline Detective. Perhaps you can tie it all together for us. Why was the body moved? And how does that lead us to the killer? Witness testimony. The missing body. I believe Machi stole the body because of some lyrics. He moved the body to match Lamarillo's song. No one in this country had a motive to kill the victim. And Machi practically left his signature at the scene. All this evidence clearly points to the defendant. Lamarillo's song? Yes, the guitarist serenade. You noticed it's code too, did you not? It's code? All the events that day followed the lyrics to a song. First, the keys my heart held onto so tightly was stolen. Then Prosecutor Gavin's deter burst into flames on stage. Mr. Latusa's life was taken by a bullet. The rest hardly needs explanation. Guitar, guitar, up together to the sky. That's mad. It's like a story out of some fairy tale. I admit, I've forgotten about that song. But there it, is, there it is now, waiting for me. The grand finale, as it were. Hey, you know, I was the one who first noticed that. I've heard of jumping rope to songs and counting the songs. But killing? It's a wild world out there, Eric Judge. Very well. We've heard one song and dance, let's get on to the next. The cross-examination. Cross Why am I having trouble saying cross-examination lately? That's not that hard to say. I'm not so sure I'm going to be doing much singing. Cross-examination. The missing body. Okay, she believes Machi stole the body because of lyrics. Moved the body and remember a song. No one in this country had motive to kill. Machi practically left the signature to scene. What do you mean by his signature? The bullet holes in the wall, of course. The bullet holes? The revolver was fired, twi fired twice. One shot missed and left a hole in the wall. And that means what exactly? That dressing room isn't exactly spacious. Picture the shooter facing off with the victim in there. They can't have been more than five feet apart. It would be difficult, almost impossible to miss at that range. Difficult to miss, you say? Very. 
Assuming the shooter could probably properly aim. No, you, you can't be serious. Machi, he, he can't see. That's why he missed? It's the only explanation that makes sense. He used sound and other senses to fire the gun. Poorly. That reminds me, the monitor in that room was blaring at the time, yeah? Hardly ideal conditions for tracking by sound. A blind shooter. No wonder he missed. I knew those bullet holes would come back to haunt me. Think, Justice. What do I do now? Well, only thing we have to do now is raise and reject it. Sure, there were bullet holes left in the wall. But that doesn't prove the shooter couldn't see. Oh, how so? Well, there could have been a struggle with the victim. Hmm, that's certainly, that's certainly possible. And, it might have been the revolver's fault. The revolver? The revolver was a very large caliber, correct? If the shooter wasn't used to firing such a large weapon, why, it could dislocate the shoulder. Exactly. The defendant, Manchi Dubai, is, as you can see, tiny. It's not so hard to picture him firing a gun and missing entirely. That kickback alone would throw off his aim. A convincing argument, to be sure. Haha, <laughs> take that, smug prosecution. Um, Apollo? Huh? What? That bit about Machi being tiny. And the gun throwing off his aim? Um, aren't you kind of, um... Admitting that he did it? Oh. It does not matter why he missed. What matters is that the shooter was, without a doubt, the defendant. Even the defense seems to agree on that point. Ugh, uh, cripes, I really put my foot in it this time. But, let's get the facts that matter on the record, if you would, Fraulein Detective. Very well, the witness will add this to her testimony. Right. From the state of the crime scene, I conclude the shooter was blind. The prosecution holds that the shooter couldn't see. A scientific conclusion based on a thorough examination of the crime scene, yes. Apparently not thorough enough. I have a certain piece of evidence that completely overturns your claim. What? This is that evidence. The photograph of the crime scene? I don't care much for the smirk on Prosecutor Jack Gavin's face, but this is no time to think twice. Time to press on. Yes, Your Honor, the crime scene. There's something in here that decisively contradicts the prosecution's point. Then perhaps you'd better show us this something. Get your finger out of the breeze and put it to good use, yeah? Very well, show us what you talk about, Mr. Justice. The contradiction not the scene of the crime is... Well... What about... This? The contradiction is right here. The smeared bloodstains. Hmm. I thought it was just my blurry vision, but it really was blurry. The way the victim's hand is raised above his head. Much like a gesture I've seen many times in this court. It sounds almost as if he wrote something. Aha, uh -huh, I get it. At least, I think I get it. Get what, Fraulein? When Mr. Latrice was shot, he tried to write something. And what would he write but the shooter's name? And what would he write in it but his own blood? Pretty good, huh? Thanks for making my point for me. Yes, in fact, that's what I think happened here. Hmm, that does seem to be a distinct possibility. The victim wrote the killer's name. It's certainly a logical conclusion. I just wish it wasn't all rubbed out like that. Of course it's rubbed out. Why, if I were a killer, I certainly wouldn't want to leave my own name behind. Neither would I. Um, no one has anything else to say? About what? So the prosecution, prosecution accepts this? You agree that this was the victim making an attempt to record the name of the killer? And that the killer tried to rub the name out? What's your point? What's my point? Let me ask you this. How did the killer know the victim was writing their name? Well, Mr. Choose was writing something in blood. Hey there, Seb. Once the killer saw what it was... Wait. Once he saw what it was? But what did you just testify about the shooter? I said they were blind. Ah! Yet the crime scene itself contradicts that. The killer had to have been able to see. Why would they rub out the name of blood otherwise? Ah, 
Ah! May I remind the court that the defendant Machi Dabai is blind? He couldn't have been the shooter. Yeah. Impossible! Order! 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 Prosecutor Gavin, please explain to me what all this means. I mean, looking at this photo, it seems quite clear that the shooter could see. Yet up until now... It seems I owe the court an apology. Hmm? The governors are banned with law enforcement ties, yet a murder occurred. During a concert, apparently this caused some confusion over jurisdiction. As a result, some reports were not filed in an entirely timely manner. I... I'm not sure I like the vibe I'm getting here. Hey Apollo, look at him. Why is Patrick Gavin all relaxed and smiling like that? Like he knows something we don't, and he's about to tell us. <laughs> I've got an idea. That's Rock. With these documents, but before that, I have a question for the frown line detective, if I may. But what? Tell me. Why do you think that Machi Dubai is blind? Huh? W what did he say? What are you saying? Of course he's blind. Of course. He's the blind pianist, right? So, so he's... Doesn't Lumberware lead him around by the hand all the time? No way. I have a report here on the defendant, Machi Dabai. According to this, Machi Dabai can see perfectly well. What? His blindness was merely a publicity ploy by those clever Borginians. He can see quite well. But, but, but you said... What did I say exactly? Her forehead, not once in the course of this trial. Have I claimed the defendant was blind? The only one who did was found line detective. But, but that's a significant fact. Yes, consider Machi Dabai sees. And he was the only one who could have fled through the air vent. I see no problems with this. But what about the bullet holes in the wall? Yes, the bullet holes. I believe our forehead neatly explained those for us. He didn't miss because he couldn't see. It was a kickback from 45 caliber revolver. A simple accident, in other words. Ugh! How is that? I'm afraid your objection has just flown off your brighter skies. Ugh. This is where the real fun begins, our forehead. Hmm. I knew you didn't have what it took. You, you jerk! Just what I was, just what was I in there for? Comic relief? Yeah, apologize. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's no way to apologize. He's angered the juicy now. Look out. Oh, <laughs> if you could please end the bickering. No. Whatever, I'm not leaving. I can't leave like this. I'll come up with some clue to solving this case if it kills me. But your testimony's already given us enough to convict the defendant. Uh, don't say that. Ah, uh, aha! Uh -huh. Aha, uh -huh, what? This blood stain. The criminal tried to wipe it off, right? That seems to be what happened, yes. We might be able to find out what was really written here. Really? You can do that? That's right, with this. It's called Luminol. Maybe you know of it? It's a chemical reacts to blood. Ah, yes. Have we done these tests yet? Ha, huh. as if I'm gonna tell you. The blood stains covered a section of the carpet. In order to perform blood tests, that section was moved and submitted. Perhaps we should request it here in court now. Right, go for it, Apollo. Huh? I have to do the test? You just have to spray the luminol on it. Simple. A chemical that reacts to blood. I've heard of this somewhere. Yes, I believe analysis is called for. How about it? We're gonna go ahead and save. Wait, ready? It's easy as pie. Just press A to spray an area. Here, give it a try. The eyes of the entire court are focused on me. Apollo, your hand's shaking. Uh, let's do this. Wow, it really works! This must be, this must be the power of science. It says, IPXX314206. 
Is that the killer's name? Hmm, maybe it is. If the killer was a robot. Aha, uh -huh, I have it. So what is it? I thought those letters IPXX looked familiar. This is an Interpol ID number. I Interpol? You mean the International Police Agency? Yes, most undercover agents work in solving international crimes. But why would he write that number? Why would Mr. Tuesday even know a number like that? Good show, Fraulein Detective. Rock on. Eh? Your Honor, we can verify this number immediately. Darian, are you there? Come up to the witness stand. Darian, you heard what we need. Go check into this Interpol ID number. Sure thing, give me 30 minutes. No, give me 27. Hmm. I'm not sure what to think of all of this. The prosecution's case is out tight, or so it seems. Yet if this number is really out of an Interpol agent... Oh, wait, I know. What if Monty Devine's really an undercover Interpol agent? That would be a possibility. Possibility, yes. The one that would mark him as the killer for certain. Why did the two know an Interpol ID number? That's what I want to know. Well, we have some time while we await Darien's report. Let's work on unraveling another mystery, shall we? Curious mystery concerning Machi Dubai. What are you talking about? Fraulein Detective, please accept my apologies. I received word that the defendant could, in fact, see just before the trial began. It seemed too much of a bother to tell you. You had me until that last bit. Does this not raise a rather straightforward question? Well, sure. Why did Machi pretend he couldn't see? Exactly. It makes little sense. What do you think, Air Forehead? Huh? Me? Monty Devine pretended he was blind. Do you know why? How could he know? Wait, Prosecutor Gavin knows why, doesn't he? He's known from the start of the trial. He's been leading this on the whole time. Hmm, something wrong? Do you think perhaps this is all some kind of game? You know, know that the moment I heard that report, I knew why. Hmm. I suppose people who have sold over a million records really are something else. What does that have to do with anything? There was a reason why Machi Tabai pretended to be blind. But it wasn't for his own sake. Getting the picture now? It wasn't for himself? Well, Mr. Justice, can you present evidence that shows us why the defendant had to feign blindness? Actually, I believe I can. Machi had no reason to pretend he couldn't see, which means... No, it couldn't be. Good show, Air Forehead. It seems you've thought of something. Uh, why can't I figure these things out on my own? I hate having to take my cues from this guy. Very well, look at this. This is why he was pretending he couldn't see. It was because of this. That is... Lamarur? Lamarur and Machi Tabai. We call their relationship. In particular, their unique arrangement over the years before visiting our country. Lamarur and her pianist, they would always walk together, she leading him by the hand. Even when they got on stage, she would lead him to the piano. She would walk all the way over there with him. That's right, because he was blind. She led him at all times, never letting him go. All times? Hmm. Yet, we have just learned something that makes the arrangement peculiar indeed. Machi could see. Why did they have to keep up the sack the whole time? Well, wasn't a part of their performance? I think there's a simpler explanation. Monty did not need to be led by the hand at all. That can only mean one thing. Ah. Uh, really? Really. It was all the other way around. The one who needed to be led by the hand was Lamoureux. What's this? So you mean to say Lamoureux is... She's... Yes, Your Honor. Lamoureux is blind. W what Order, order, order! This is crazy, Prosecutor Gavin. Is it now? Please, please shed some sanity on this madness. Defense has made an outrageous claim. The only thing outrageous I see about the defense is his vast forehead. Yet I see it is not vast in vain, this time. He's quite correct. But, but that makes no sense. Yeah, wasn't she supposed to be the landscape painter and sound or something? Well, since we have her here, why not ask Lamar herself? I believe she is still in the witness waiting room. Uh, Apollo, what does this mean for her case? Don't ask me, I had no idea she couldn't see. I hadn't even imagined it until now. 
Bailiff, bring in Lama Rar. Lama Rar, it pains me deeply to call you before us again in this way, and yet I must. Please, do not be concerned on my behalf. Those eyes, she really can't see? Really? It is true. How funny it is that a tiny lie born in the Virginian countryside would one day grow to entangle the entire world. So, so you are? Yes, as I mentioned before, I have no memory of the time before I became Lamoureux. Know too that my memories begin in darkness. The word light has no meaning for Lamoureux. I see. You may recall me saying something toward the beginning of this trial, or forehead. What's that? I believe I said it was unfortunate this crime had no direct witnesses. Ah. Now, Lamoureux, I must ask you to stand once more. Will you testify to the court about your eyes? Of course. It was never my intent to deceive any of you. May I begin, Your Honor? Uh, yes. Yes, of course. Though I admit, I'm a little lost here. I think we're all a little lost here, Your Honor. Witness Testimony Lamoureux's Eyes I have no memory of the light. I debuted in a world of darkness and sound. My producer came up with my PR line before he knew this. So, silly as my sound, I had to pretend I could see. Everyone on my staff knew, of course, but no others. But, this is a murder trial! I apologize. It was part of my contract, you see. It was to keep my blindness a secret, no matter what. Music is everything for me. I never imagined something like this would... She told us the truth in the beginning, when she said she saw nothing. Very well. Does defense have anything to add? Let me go ahead and save. I'd like to cross-examine. But what is there left to ask? There was one thing in her testimony that bothered me. Perhaps it is best we let you get it out of your system. Someday you'll come to understand the importance of thinking for yourself. Very well, defense may proceed. However, be aware this court will not tolerate any questions deemed too stressful to witness. Okay. There was only one part of that bothered me. Just let me ask about that and I'll be happy. Cross-examination. Lamoureux's eyes. She has no memory of the light. She debuted in the world of darkness and sound. Her producer came up with a PR line. Series of my sounds she had to pretend she could see. Everyone in her staff knew, of course, but no, that's the part that's bothering me. When you say your staff, do you include Mr. Latouse? Of course, he was my manager. So he knew, and that's what has been bugging me. Something matter, Mr. Justice? I believe I know what is bothering a young defense attorney. You were thinking of when you discovered the body, yes? Is he right, Apollo? Yes, I was. <clears throat> he, he's a lot, I'm not reading this again. This is getting irritating now. <laughs> I think we get the point by now. I, I, I know we have to watch this again just because of testimony, but I am not reading this again. Mr. Latouse told me to ask the witness, and he named you. Why would he do that? He knew you were blind. I, I, I don't know. Tsk, tsk. What did I just say? You need to learn to think for yourself. Meaning what? There is no mystery here if you recall everything he said. Think of his last words once more. The witness, Siren. We heard them many times along with a little play acting by our defense. I remember them well myself, but that statement is not to what I refer. I mean what he said before that. Before? What came before that? Ah! That's right. He tried to tell you. When he said can't see, he wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about the witness. I see. Too bad the defense did not. Well, Air Forehead, try relaxing and looking at the facts first next time. I <laughs> love that face he makes. Order! Order! We call Lamoureux's earlier testimony. I was on my way from the stage to the backstage exit. There were two shots. I couldn't do anything to stop it. But she couldn't have heard those gunshots. I thought we proved that. That is not the most important point here. Hmm? 
The moment he was shot, Mr. Two witnessed her through that window. Why else would he have named her as the witness? Ah! But I really did hear them. Two gunshots and a man's voice. Unfortunately, such a thing was impossible. The window was closed. We have already run a simulation, of course. But it was so clear. If I had heard that voice again, I would know it in an instant. Hmm. Your Honor! What is it, Bailiff? Can't you see we're in a session here? We have the results back from the investigation. The investigation? Ah, the Interpol number that Mr. Toos left us. Well, let's hear it. We will continue this cross-examination ex afterward. Detective Crescent, your report, please. I asked Interpol about that number. I'm sure you'll find their answer intriguing. Quick work as always, Darian. Well, tell us about the number. Is the defendant a secret agent? IPXX314206, the agent registered under this number, was Romain Latous. What? Our undercover Interpol agent was Mr. Latous himself. He was apparently in the middle of an operation. So, when he wrote those letters, he was trying to tell us his own identity, and a cautious killer tried to wipe them away. Mr. Latouse was an undercover Interpol agent, so him being Lamoureux's manager was just a cover, most likely. There's only one other important detail I found. Well, out with it. It concerns that 45 caliber revolver, the murder weapon. Apparently it belonged to Romain Latouse. He had an Interpol permit to carry firearms, and a registration number and revolver match. So the victim was killed with his own weapon, which makes sense. It's hard to imagine someone who wasn't an Interpol agent with such a large revolver. So the victim was an Interpol agent on an undercover op. I wonder how that ties into everything. It's got to tie in somehow, you'd think. Yeah, somehow. Thanks for looking into that for us, Detective Crescent. It's a great help. Oh, no problem at all, Your Honor. I'll be heading out. Wait. The Lamoureux? Is something the matter? That voice just now. Darian? Mr. Darian, is it? It was him. I am sure of it. It was him? Y you aren't saying. That voice I heard talking Mr. Latouse when I heard the gunshots fired. It was him. It was Mr. Darian. Is this some kind of joke? What? No way. The courtroom fell into such a chaotic state the trial had to be suspended temporarily. I'd never seen that happen before. Of course, it's not every day that you get an accusation like that one. Lemurer, fingering Darian Crescent, known as he a guitarist, he's a detective. Could it really have been his voice Lemurer heard? Things were changing fast and frankly I wasn't sure I could keep up with it. Hey, no wimping out now, Paulo. And so concludes day one of the trial, and wow, that is a bombshell. Looks like we got a lot to ponder here and to consider whenever we do day two of the investigation, which will begin in the next episode, but hopefully we can form a strong enough case where we can acquit Machi the Bai and possibly implicate Darian as the real killer of this trial, but we'll see what we find, and hopefully you'll join us here in the next episode. But thank you guys so much for watching this. Hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. I'll be seeing you guys again next time.